This spreadsheet will allow your class to collect data on a variety of conditions and compare graphs across them. Each team will have its own tab. Let's see an example of how to enter data for one of these conditions. The first column in each table is where you enter the height of the top surface of the material that is on the scale. This will typically remain constant throughout your investigation. Let's say you measure that value to be 14 centimeters. You can then enter the second height that you'll be measuring in the column to the right of this. This is the height of the surface of the bottom of the material you're holding above the first material. Let's say that is 14.5 centimeters. The fourth column to the right will automatically calculate the difference between these two values, giving you the distance between both. It does this by subtracting the value in the second column from the value in the first column. Another calculation will be made in the spreadsheet in column five, when you enter the gram force value reported on the scale into the third column to the right. Let's say we enter a value of 1.0 here. Then notice that this column will multiply this value by 9.8 to yield the equivalent amount of force in millinewtons. Once you have all of your data entered into your tables, you'll be able to produce a graph from each of them. Let's show how to do that next. You can make a graph from your data by highlighting the columns and all the rows you want to graph, including the column headings. Then select Insert, Chart. You then need to drag the graph produced so that you have space to see the table, and you'll want to resize that graph so that a second graph can fit next to it. It is suggested that you relabel both graphs so that you and others can keep track of which one is which. You do this by clicking on the title and retyping which condition it represents, either condition one or three, depending what group you're in.